Welcome to The Dessert Show. I'm Debbie Fields and we're going to have fun today because we are going to create some of my personal favorite recipes. These recipes are easy and they taste so good. You're going to be so excited when you take a bite of the wonderful recipes that you can create at home. They really are fabulous. Today we're going to be making chocolate buttercreams and oh, it's phenomenal. And then chocolate pate with raspberry sauce. It's really a nice, creamy, interesting chocolate dessert that is kind of a twist when you want something unique and chocolatey. And then finally, the very special section of our show where we get a chance to create recipes that are low in fat and of course always easy to make and light in calories. And that's going to be bananas la orange. And I know I may not say la orange properly, but it really does taste great. Now here's the ingredients you're gonna need. The chocolate buttercream cookies are three quarters of a cup of salted butter, half a cup of confectioner's sugar, a quarter cup of light brown sugar, and two large egg yolks. A half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and a quarter teaspoon of almond extract. The filling has a half a cup of heavy cream and one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. The topping, two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. The most important thing is to realize that this recipe is so wonderful that just in case you didn't have a chance to write that all down, you don't have to worry because at the end of the show, I will tell you how to get all of these wonderful recipes. So just stay and watch because this is going to be great. What we have right now is um, two cookie sheets. Now I want you to take a look at this. In front of me, I have two cookie sheets. Now commonly, what you'll discover is that most people will think of this as a cookie sheet. But this is a cookie sheet in terms of what we probably think of at home as long as it's been turned over. You may say, why? Well, the reason is, when you bake on what we typically think is a cookie sheet, the, these corners have a tendency to retain heat. Have you ever noticed how your cookies at home always cook um, and you have brown edges always on the corners but never in the center? Well, that's because it's not a cookie sheet. In order to have your heat flow perfectly, you can have this same cookie sheet at home, but turn it over and just bake on the back. Now, traditionally, this is the cookie sheet that is perfect for baking cookies. The reason is it doesn't have the four corners, it allows heat to flow, and it allows all of your cookies to brown. Additionally, the one other factor is that whenever possible, you always want to bake on light colored sheets. The reason is that allows your cookies to bake evenly. Dark colored sheets has a tendency to retain heat, and if you've ever seen the bottom of your cookies get crispy and crunchy and develop this uh, hard bottom, well that's because it's black, and black has a tendency to retain heat. And if you want to avoid avoid crispy cookies, that's one way to do it. Now, I also have in front of me parchment paper. Let me show you, this is a great tool to have at home. It's parchment, parchment cooking paper. That's what you want to look for. And this will save you time, and it really makes it easy for you, because when you're baking, all you need to do is take uh, the parchment paper, you won't need to grease your cookie sheets, so it reduces the amount of fat that goes on your cookies. And then, once it's baked, you can simply take it and transfer the cookies off. And it's really easy to do, as I said, and it keeps things nice and clean and saves you some time. Okay, now it's time, of course, to begin making these wonderful um, chocolate butter creams. But did you know, because brown sugar is going to be used in this recipe, that brown sugar is uh, white sugar, which is combined with molasses. And there are two types of brown sugar. One is light and the other one's dark. The light brown sugar has a more delicate flavor, with the dark brown has a more intense flavor because it has more molasses in it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to make our actual crust that uh, encases this chocolate cookie, and oh, it's good. What it is, it's butter. Butter is softened at room temperature. Now, this cookie has a wonderful buttery crust or shell. And then inside it is this creamy chocolate. It's kind of like um, truffles, creamy chocolate fudge that's really moist. Well, that's what we're about to make. And I guarantee you, when you take a bite of this, this is one of my personal favorites. I love these, and so do my family. I mean, they're just, they're just really neat. These are great I love you cookies, because when you make them, whoever you share them with, you're saying, hey, listen, this is a gift from my heart. Okay, now to that, we're going to be adding our powdered sugar and continue to blend 
You want to blend on low speed whenever you're blending in powdered sugar because you have a tendency, powdered sugar has a tendency to get all over. <laughs> so what you want to do is blend low on low speed until it gets incorporated and then increase your speed as um, the, the sugar gets blended into your butter. To that we're adding our light brown sugar. And interesting enough, I want you to see that this has uh, got this brown sugar has gotten hard and to make it easier for you just go ahead and just use your hands to uh, break it up because it, otherwise it will not incorporate fully. Okay, now remember the other thing you can do with brown sugar is if it ever gets really dry and hard and living in Utah where I live my, my sugars have a tendency to dry out because there's like no humidity uh, in Utah and what happens is you can just simply take your brown sugar put it in a blender and uh, food, a food blender and just mix it on high speed and you'll get your dry sugar to uh, be reusable again because it will turn into um, it will break down and you can use it so there's no reason to ever throw away sugar okay after that's been fully blended we're now going to add our egg yolk and of course our vanilla and our almond flavoring. Now at home you may notice that I'm not measuring the uh, extracts. It's important that you measure. I, I don't really believe you can ever put in too much vanilla. I mean, I love vanilla. But at home, it is important for you to have your uh, teaspoons standing by. Okay. Now as this is all blended, we're going to add our flour and continue to blend. This is a great, great, uh, a cookie recipe if you just wanted to make butter cookies and you wanted to forget the chocolate it's that good okay as this is all blended you can start seeing that it's it's going to kind of attempt to create like a little ball as soon as it starts getting fully incorporated that's when we know that uh, we have blended our flowers now take a moment to scrape down the sides to make sure you get everything fully mixed in and as you can see it's creating a ball it's a crumbly little ball texture. This is actually a good time to, um, in essence, grab it and form it into a ball, as you can see. It's, it's now in a ball. What we do is we take that ball and we, we put plastic wrap around it and we flatten it into a disc. So that way it'll be easier to roll out when it becomes firm. We're going to place this with the plastic wrap around it in a disc form in the refrigerator. We're going to let it sit there for approximately one hour. What we're trying to do is just get it nice and firm. Now let me show you what it looks like when it's done. You take it out of the refrigerator and you put it on a um, board and you have, it you have flour on it. You take your rolling pin and you just want to go ahead and roll it out. So it's about, oh, I'd say about a quarter of an inch in thickness. And notice how this is starting to stick. The way to solve that problem is to take a little bit of flour, powdered sugar. You don't want to add too much. The reason is, if you add too much, you'll have a tendency to um, make this dough, which is so wonderful and buttery and flaky, uh, it'll be tough. Okay, then what we're going to do, just continue to work with it. We're going to, um, as we've spread it out, we're going to take a little disc and we're going to dip it in flour so it doesn't stick. And this is approximately two inches. And we're going to cut this out. And we're going to place that onto a ungreased cookie sheet. And we're going to continue to do this. And you want to use your excess dough. So as uh, you just simply do that. Now let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to take the chocolate chips that have been melted down and the heavy cream and we want to be very careful here. You just want to add, you want to get it to the point now where it's cool. Just add a little bit in the center. Okay. Then you take the top of this, place it on top, and with a fork dipped in ice water, we are going to just seal the corners. The reason is we want to do this to keep the chocolate in the center so that it doesn't ooze out. And that's what we're doing here, is we're just sealing it so the chocolate does not ooze out when it bakes. 
Now we're going to be baking it at 325 degrees. It will be baking for approximately 15 minutes, but you'll know when it's done because they'll be light and golden. I want to show you what it looks like when it's done. These are phenomenal. Now you sprinkle them with powdered sugar, and look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Oh. Now come right back. Chocolate pate with raspberry sauce. See ya.